Hi, it's Tanya with Red Cardinal Crafts, and today I'm going to show you these Mill Hill kits that I've been doing. Um, they're beaded cross-stitch kits, and I've done a few for my Christmas tree. I have this little one that I started to do the other day to show you guys. The problem is the color of it is a little tricky to see because it's white, um, and the color, of course, I started with was light beige, um, just based on how the pattern goes. So I found that a little tricky, so I'm going to work on uh, something with a little bit darker colors. These ones are, have like a little plastic um, uh, material that you stitch on and these ones here um, actually use paper. So when you get your kit it looks like this on the back so you have some beads, you have your thread, you have your paper and you have your instructions. So let's just open it up. I keep everything in the package and then like this one here that I'm working on I have all my floss and everything inside and I have the picture and everything so when I'm working on it I have it all together. So this is one of the three wise men because I'm doing a nati uh, nativity set. I just thought they were so pretty, like the jewel tones in the in the um, threads and the beads. I just thought they were really pretty um, and they should look really nice. So these are a six by six size. Uh, the finished size is approximately five um, and a quarter by three and a half because what you do when you're done is you trim them and then you can hang them like a tree ornament. So inside, like I said, you get the thread, you get the different beads that you use, and you get your needles, and then you also have a little extra jewel. So it looks like the jewel is hanging right there. The instructions that you get are great. Um, so you have your instructions written out with all the different floss colors, which are these. Um, it shows you how many strands to use. With the beads, the really cool thing with those Okay, so you get three packages of beads, and you're like, okay, which ones am I supposed to use? So figure out maybe some of the colors that you can sort of figure out is the gray. Okay, so we look for pebble gray, and it shows a little plus sign next to it. There's another bead in the bag, which is purple, so when you go down and look, petite purple has a plus sign next to it, so you know those are from the one bag. And then the same with these. So here we have Petite Victorian Gold. Um, there's a whole bunch of those, so they have them on there twice. And there's two different symbols um, to use those. So those have a little asterisk next to them. And then Brilliant Magenta is in that bag. So they separate them that way, and then you can figure out which colors you have. Then the other ones don't have a symbol next to them. So there's the Brilliant Teal, the Elderberry, which is like the rose color. And then we have the Petite Ice, which is the clear. So it's really good when they show it like that. And then it shows that when you put the beads on, you only use um, two strands. And then we have the little um, jewel thing at the end that you'll put um, on there. And then it just says to use um, the two strands. And it shows you what color floss to use when you're, when you're stitching those on too. So that's the beads and your floss. Then you flip it open and there's your pattern right there. So you can use this as reference to look at to make sure you have the right color, especially when you're separating your threads, um, just to make sure it makes sense. Um, so this is just mostly to advertise what it's going to look like. So, But this is the pattern you're going to use. Now you can see that there's something separate over here. So you're going to stitch that separate, but then it's actually going to be stitched on under his hand. So it's like a separate little item that you're going to stitch on. And some of the patterns are like that. Um, this little one I'm doing, this is just all one piece. The one thing that is going to hang from it is the little um, string of beads that's going to be like the, the rope for the, the sled. Um, I have another one here. Let me grab my other one. Um, this one here, I have a shepherd, and he's just all one piece. So not all the time do you... Um, you know, have to separate and, and add a little piece. So when I stitch this, I'm going to stitch him, you know, on here, and then a little ways over here, I'll stitch this other piece, and then afterwards, I'll cut it out. All right, so there we go with that. And you know what? That kind of answers my question, because what I was going to do is uh, possibly frame all of these, but this one's going to be done separate. Um, it has to be cut, so I will just cut these out and use them as, as tree ornaments. I was kind of on the fence as to what I was going to do there. Then on the back, you have your special instructions. Um, it says, before proceeding, read the general stitching and beading instructions, um, and then stitches. It is charted with the colors that you're supposed to use and attach all the beads and 
Um, so yeah, it gives you all your instructions and it tells you your general stitching and how to get started, which I'm going to show you here in a second, and how to do your first stitch. It shows you how to cross stitch and it shows you how to do your beads. So we will get to that and I will show you and it talks about the beading. So I had seen a, um, a woman that I um, used to stitch with in Bermuda and I saw her working on these and she worked on them all the time and it wasn't until right before um, we moved that I finally sat down with her and said, can you please show me these things you work on all the time? And I was like, oh my God, these are beautiful must have these. So when we first moved here and lived in the hotel, I ordered some little Christmas ornaments and I worked on those in the hotel and it was a fun little craft that I was able to do um, while we were kind of stuck in the hotel there. So, all right, so this is a paper. These ones here, the little ornaments are a plastic. So at least I think, yeah, these ones are plastic. This one's more of a paper. So, to get started, there doesn't seem to be a front or a back. In my head, this one side does feel a little bit smoother. So, I'm going to flip this down. And what you do to get started is you have to find the center of your fabric or your paper here. So, I'm just going to do a diagonal line from one corner to the other and then from one corner to the other corner. And there's also something here with this paper that I see already that's going to drive me crazy. When you get these, sometimes the edges of the paper, can you see that it's all little separate little things? Sorry, my hands are so dry. Um, little separate little things and your thread is going to get caught. So sometimes what I, I'll do is I might just trim off that little edge and make it smoother. I mean, don't go trimming the whole thing because you'll run out of um, material, but it's just the way it's it's cut the when they're prepping it. So just get rid of little bumps because your thread, I'm telling you, will get caught. There. So it seems okay. That side's not too bad. Alrighty. So we get that ready. So in doing that X, we've now found the center of our work because when you look at your pattern, there's a center point where you're going to start. Now, when I work on a pattern like this one here, the little sleigh that I'm working on, I mark off what I've worked on already with highlighters. So I just have some highlighters here. So we're going to grab one of them. And to find the center and how to begin, there's an arrow at the top here and an arrow over here on the side. So you're just going to come over like that, and you're going to come down. That one's right on the line, so that's nice and helpful. Now, because this one's on the line, you can kind of pick the square on either side of the line to start. So I'm coming over here, and I am going to start right here. So there's our center. Now, to know which thread you're going to use, there's little symbols, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little circle it's a black circle with a white star. So you come over here and you find a black circle with a white star. Of course, it's a bead. Okay, well, we're not going to start with the bead because you do beads at the end. Okay, so what's the symbol next to it? It is an arrow that's looping upside down. So let's check that one out. There we go. Okay, so we have cross-stitching. So don't do any, any of the symbols that you have for beads, like the black hearts. Where are my black hearts? Sometimes it's hard to find them, and sometimes it's like one little stitch. Oh my gosh, seriously, where is the black heart? Oh, one, <laughs> right at the top. So, all that for that one little stitch. Seriously? And that's a bead. So, any of the bead symbols don't do until the very end. You need to have all your cross stitch done first. So this upside down arrow is turquoise. Now the thing with some of these patterns is you're switching colors all the time. So that little turquoise thing is right here and it's going to be his his sleeve. Okay. Um, some people when they cross stitch they will start right at this very top and they will zigzag back and forth and their work will look beautiful and they switch colors as they're going and you can flip their work over and the back of their work looks just as nice as the front. It's unbelievable. Um, I've seen it and it's, 
it baffles me. It's, I don't have that kind of patience. So I start, I will start with that little arrow and I will zigzag through the pattern with that arrow until I run out of a space. So if my arrow ends here and you can see that you don't do the turquoise again till over here, I will work down this little section, get that done, cut, um, weave my thread through, cut it off, and then I will start later on and go up over here. If you skip around too much, um, you, you run the risk of um, messing up and then miscounting where you are. So start in this section and then kind of spread out from there and you end up working out the pattern like that and you kind of start here and you'll work down and maybe you'll get all this section done over here and then you'll come over and you'll get this section done. Um, that's how I work anyway and especially with a pattern like this where it is a lot of colors and you are um, kind of jumping all over the place. So speaking of colors here is your wad of floss. So I'm going to show you how I prepare mine. So it is in a big long strand like this and is quite long. It's about two feet of each color. Now there are a ton of colors. So what I do before I even get this chart to figure out what's what, I just kind of visually, you got a little fluffs from cutting that, um, I just visually piece together the colors that I see look the same. And I separate those like this. So there's a lot of teal or turquoise, whatever this color is. So I pull those out and separate them from the group and just pull easy because if not, you will get a mass like that and it'll be a hot mess and you'll be just all tangled threads. Okay, so I just separate mine out and I lay it in my fingers like this and I just wind it around my fingers like I would um, a bobbin like that. And I just keep it like that. Then I go and I find the next set of colors. So it looks like there's a black. So I'll pull that one out and I'll wind them up. And I will do this with all the colors. So I'm going to keep going and do that. Now see when you get into the yellows, some are actually darker than others, so you have to be careful. So basically, find the colors that you can tell go together. And get those ones done first. And then it's just kind of process of elimination near the end there. And these kits, these ones here are about, I think they're like $7.95 for these larger ones. I think I can't remember. I buy them from one two three stitch um, and they're really good with their shipping and it arrives nicely and I've never had any complaints about these kits. They're they're really lovely. Um, I did go into Walmart a little while ago to videotape some of the kits, so I'll just insert that here. Um, they're really there's really nice kits that you can get. Um, and some of those are just done with like an Ada cloth uh, instead of the paper or the plastic. And what I would suggest is getting a kit similar to this, like with the threads all included. It just makes it easier and instead of going out and buying all your floss and then realizing, you know what, I really hate cross stitch, it's just easier to just go buy a kit like this um, or like the ones I'm showing you there at Walmart that do have um, the you know all the supplies contained in the package and then you're not having to buy stuff because I have DMC floss and I have four containers of it I think I have all the colors um, that I've collected over the years I started cross stitching when I was about 18 19 years old my sister taught me and um, I just collected it over the years and to, I don't know, to go out and buy all the floss and everything and then to go buy your cloth, it just seems kind of a little bit of a hassle initially until you really kind of find out if you like cross stitch. So it is nice to buy these in the kits with the thread, the needle, everything's contained. What I do like about these kits is that um, it is a stiff 
piece of paper or it is a stiff piece of plastic um, and then you don't have to worry about the embroidery hoop and how tense you have it um, uh, or how taut you have your material um, okay so now we have all our colors so what I do next is I have these little um, Ziploc bags and I got some of these from the dollar store like Dollarama in Halifax they have a tiny little craft section so you can check your dollar store I know Michaels carries them they're gonna be a little bit more than a dollar um, at Michaels but I just put each color in its own little bag okay so I have all the colors separated in their bags then what I do is I go back to my chart and I figure out which ones are which so I know the first color is black so it's gonna go there the next one I need is a dark purple and a medium purple. So process of elimination. There's my dark purple. There's my medium purple. I need a medium brown. So let's put our browns together. Looks like it's just the two. So I would say this is a medium brown. Then we need a medium gray. And then magenta, which would be that one medium gold so I have a couple different golds so I'm gonna say it's this one we need a dark brown a dark gray a burgundy a turquoise a dark gold and a light gray so this is not a light gray so I will go back and I think this would be my light gray and this would be my medium gray. It kind of has a green tint to it. And then I'm looking at this one and I forgot it. It's yellow. So here's yellow next to my turquoise. So I have them all laid out um, in the order they are here. So now what I'll do is I will take my label maker. This is just the brother P touch and I will go in and I will label each of the bags. So the first one is black. And I will just print this out. The cartridge I have for this is black print on clear. So it looks white at this point. We're just going to do this. Here's my black little bag. And I peel the label off the back like that. And I just put the label down towards the bottom of the bag. And it looks like that. So there's my black. And that's done. Then I go to the next one, and because the bags are only so big, this next one is dark purple, so I'll just put DK purple, and I'll print that off. And just comes out the thing. There's my little cartridge, and it says clear, so I know which cartridge I have. And we go like this. And if it's too long for the bag, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just trim the label right up to the edge of the words a little bit. Here's dark purple. And I'll do that. And then put that label on. And I'll go through and I'll do all the little bags and then I'll have it and I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to do my stitching. So let me go finish the rest of those and I'll be back. I have all my bags labeled. So we are ready to actually start stitching. So when we start at that center point, as you can see right there. The first one we need to do is the arrow that's pointing down. So we know that's our turquoise color. So we're gonna move all of these out of the way. And see, isn't it so much easier to move them once they're all in their little bags and we know what colors they are? It makes it so much more enjoyable. All right, so you need to now find the bag that has the needle in it. So here it is here. These kits are great because everything you need is in them. So that's what I suggest if you're starting out with cross stitch, I would get a kit. And then in here you can also see the bead needle and it's much smaller. So here is the cross stitch needle. It's thicker and it has a larger eye to it and then the bead needle is really tiny and has a tiny little eye to it. So that one can go back in the bead bag for now because we're not going to use that until we start doing beads, which won't be until we get all this cross stitch done. Okay, so we know the first color is gonna be turquoise that we're using here. We know we need three strands. So you open up your bag. <clears throat> if I 
I can open up the bag. All right. So, and these come in groups of six. So here's the whole piece here. So the extra ones, I'm just gonna wind back up and put away in the bag for right now, like that. And these come in strands of six. So you just separate it into the two groups of three, like that, and just take the long strand of it and lay it out um, in front of you kind of thing, or behind you. And you just start pulling, and I just start winding it like this. And that way, if you keep it like in a long strip like that, it won't get tangled. So there you go. So take one of those and wind that one back up on your fingers because you're not going to need that right now because you're working just with the other um, pieces. So just pop that into the bag and put it off to the side for a minute. Now, for threading your needle, people have very different techniques. You can take the tips of it, they're generally lined up and you can put them in that way. For some reason I have this habit of doing this, I lay the thread across the needle like that and then I squish it between my fingers and pull the needle out and it just makes a nice little flat um, line of thread and then I just push it through like that, okay? And then because this, this floss is so long, it's like two feet long, pull this tail until you get kind of like that close to the end. All right, so now you're going to find that center mark in between your X there, and you're gonna put your needle in. Now I'm gonna go on this side because we discovered that we're starting with this one here. So I'm gonna just put a different color highlighter. Actually, I'll use green so it's completely different because I don't know how it's gonna show on camera. So my center point that I found in the orange there Sorry, I've got my phone mounted above me and it shakes a little bit. So the center point I found there turned out to be a bead that we need to do. So I'm going to put my starting one right here, and that's the little arrow. That's where we're going to start. And you can see that it goes this way, then this way, then this way, then this way. Okay? Then it goes up, going that way too. Okay, so we're going to go up through. So here's our center. I'm going to move over to... Right about there, and that's where I'm going to pop up, okay? So you're going to pull your needle through, and go like this, and you're going to stop with about a quarter of an inch left, because if you keep pulling, boom, you just undid what you're trying to do. Okay, so let's try this again. So you're going to put your needle through, you're going to pull it through and leave a quarter of an inch tail like that. Hold it down with your fingers here. You're going to flip this over and you're going to go to the diagonal hole. So you've just come up this one, you're going to go over here on the on the angle like that. Okay. And you're going to pull that all the way through and make sure your tail is going through there because if you leave it, it's going to make it really thick because you're actually then going to be working with six strands. So always make sure that this tail is still visible when you're pulling through. Okay, because if you if you get up to here and now your threads up to this point and you're pulling it through and you're leaving it like that, it's going to be six strands of thread, so it's going to be too thick. All right, so go back to holding that. So we've just gone on the diagonal. Now you're going to come up in this bottom circle. You see what I'm doing? This time when you're pulling, now this is just for this particular stitch, just to get your work started. You're going to pull and you're going to leave a little bit of a loop of thread until you anchor this little tail. So all you do is you put it around that little tail like this. And then when you pull, <laughs> you gotta keep holding it down. When you pull it, it's gonna flop that tail over like that. 
and lock it down. So now when you pull, it's not going anywhere. Okay. So we've gone up in this hole, down in that one. We've popped up in this bottom hole and we're going to go across and pull all the way down. And there is your little X. Now it's kind of a bit of a blob, but it, trust me, it is an X. So that's what we just did. We went up and over and then popped up through this hole and went over here. Okay. Now, if you're following a pattern and it calls for this color in this next square up, watch what's going to happen. If we know to come up in the bottom corner, watch what's going to happen to the thread. You just undid your X. Okay, so it's sometimes in your pattern, what might happen is, ooh, I've just done a turquoise there. I need to do another one. So you just have to reverse the way you're going. So that first stitch, instead of coming up the bottom, instead of coming up here and going down that hole, you have to come up this hole first and go this way. So you would come up like this, and then you would go down. And then just do the next stitch the same. You're coming up in the bottom right. Like that. And if you're having resistance, look, I've just created a mess on the back. So just loosely pull it. And that is going to happen. It will happen. Just undo the little tangle that you got. So you just pull that. All right. And then we're still going to go the bottom right to the top left. So you're still doing your X, you're just reversing the direction of the, the bottom one. So what we did instead, so when we did this one and this one, instead of coming up back up this same one to do this next cross stitch, we had to come up here and go that way and then here and over. Okay? So, and that's probably why people start up here and work their way down, because you're never doing that. You're never going up and undoing your work. So, guess what? I just showed that as a demonstration, and you don't even <laughs> need this stitch. So to take out a stitch, this is a good way to show you, just loosely put your needle in underneath that stitch and pull it out, and do the same thing going this way, and pull, whoops got my hands tangled and just pull the stitch out like that and you've just undone it and then you just have to go around the back and undo it so it is possible to undo um, your stitches if you if you have to okay so we have this one done so that's the one we just highlighted now we have to do one that's over here and it's on a diagonal so we're still gonna do the same thing I'm going to thread my needle again because I took it out just to show you guys how to undo that. All right, so here's our little square, but we need to put this next stitch in this square over here. So you got to just look at it as a grid. So I'm still going to come up in the bottom left, and I'm going to come back down on the top right. I'm going to come up in the bottom right and go down in the top left. And there's our two stitches. So it's crossed off. The next one we're going to do is coming back this way and it's going to be right here. Now I'm, I'm highlighting it before I actually do the stitch, but <laughs> wait till you do the stitch and then highlight it. So again, we're going to come up in this bottom section. This bottom left. I got a tangle again. <laughs> oh, this is so annoying when it happens. It's because the thread is kind of thick. And a big bunch. And because I'm talking and I'm not concentrating on what I'm actually doing. Okay, so just loosen it up. Worst case, you get a crazy, crazy tangle. Try to get it undone as best you can. Worst case, you just cut it. And I think that's why they give you so much thread with these kits, is just in case thread. All right, so came up in the bottom left. We're going to go down on the top right. <clears throat> Come up in the bottom right. 
and go down in the top left. So now we have the three stitches done. And then when I look at the pattern, we're going back the other way again. Bottom left, top right. And then bottom right and top left. And you're going to get the hang of this after a while. Your needle's probably coming up over here or you're over here or you've just stabbed yourself. I've done it before. Um, I've stabbed myself and it really hurts. These needles aren't that um, pointy, so I think you'll be okay because you can you can touch the tip of it. I mean, no, don't be jabbing it into your hand, but um, yeah, it sort of hurts, but not really. Okay, so we have those four stitches like this. Now we just look around the same area to see if there's any more, and there is another one down here. There's a few of them. There's actually about eight stitches and then it's coming back up this way. So we can go over three squares or we can go over one and down three squares. Either way you kind of have to count. So we're going to go over one and then one, two, and we're going to start in the in the fourth one. So we're going to go over one and go one, two, three, four, we start again. Okay, so this is what they mean by counted cross stitch. So what I do is I come up in the in each one of those holes. So one, two, three, four. And we know it's the fourth one that we need to come up through. So you're always starting in the bottom left and going to the top right. Alright, so we got that one done. So go in with your highlighter. And that's the one we just did right there. And to double check, there's three more spaces. So one, two, three. So let's just double check with our pattern. And it's one, two, three. So we did put it in the right spot. Now there's another one underneath it. So we're going to go right here. Like that. And there's one over here on the diagonal. And just use the point of your needle if you get any tangles. I seem to be getting a lot of tangles right now. It's making me crazy. You know why it is? It's because I'm filming. If I wasn't filming, this would be going smoothly. <laughs> All right. So we have two stitches and then the one over here. So we've done one, two stitches, and the one over here. And it keeps going down. So I could keep going down this way, which probably makes the most sense. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to skip one space. Looks like a bead is going to go there. And then I'm going to do one more. And that's what you do. It's, it's basically color by number. Did you ever used to do those paintings? Your coloring the thing by pattern. So whatever pattern it shows, this is really tangly. And I probably should edit these sections out, but you know what? It's a reality of cross stitch. Your threads are going to get tangled. It happens. So I'm just going to show you. It's no big deal. And you don't have to throw this across the room and get frustrated. All right. So there is the next stitch. So I'm going to go over here and highlight that. And if I was doing a whole section, like say this whole section over here was like all one color, I would just go one row after the other. But this is kind of all over the place and that's why I'm marking um, with my highlighter as I go because it can be very confusing. So I've got this next stitch and I've got a stitch down below that. So you can see these take a lot of work so when you see somebody with a huge cross stitch pro um, project you know it took a long time because it takes a long time and I've only done like seven, eight, nine, ten, ten stitches. 
So it's a lot of work, but you know what? They're fun and they're so nice to have when you're done. So there's that one. And I'm going to fill in the two squares that I did. And there we go. And I'm just going to continue on. And then what you can do, I'll just show you here just so you can see it. Uh, if you get to the end and now you're done with your thread, all I do is I run my needle back up through and I just catch some of the little threads under my needle and I pull it up like this, like that, and then I just trim it as close to that as I can. There you go. And then you just start your next color. So I'm actually still working with this color, so I'm just going to do it again. And... You just have to start like we did before. So this was a new color. Just pretend we're using a different color. You just hold on to the tail and go bottom left to top right. And then when you do the bottom right and you come back up like that, that's when you need to leave the little loop to lock this little tail thread. Okay, I'm sure I'm using all the correct terms. <laughs> Alright, so just keep it over like that. And you're going to pull. That's going to lock that tail down like that. And then you just keep going and you just keep following the pattern until you're done. And it's just very helpful if you follow along. Um, with your highlighter. Oh, <laughs> our printer now lives under my desk, so one of my kids is upstairs doing homework and is now printing underneath me. It kind of scares the heck out of me every time they do that. <laughs> so we're good. So always make sure you leave that, um, when you leave your pattern and you're going to go do something like I'm about to do, um, make sure when you come down you finish and you actually highlight where you stop. So when you come back to it, you know what's going on. Hi guys, so I am back with my cross stitch. So I have everything done except for the beads. So this is what I'm gonna show you now. So this is probably taking me on and off. I mean, I wasn't working on it um, every single day, but it probably took me, oh, I'd say a couple weeks um, to do. And I have a little dish that I got from Desau, which is a little um, dollar store here, and it has all little Japanese things, and it's so cute. So here's our beads. Don't need all of them out because I have yet to have a pattern that uses all the beads. So let me just straighten my paper here. I meant to tape this down. So let's figure out where the gray beads go. So pebble gray, so it's the little circle with the slant, so there's some up in here. And we need, if we're using the pebble gray, we need the dark gray thread. So let me just grab my dark gray thread. Now I'm going to show you how I was taught to do this. Because when I used to do my bobbin lace, I used to work with my lace teacher, and there was another lady there that did some beautiful cross stitch. Her name was Janet. And right after we moved here to Seattle, I got word that she had passed away. She had a cancer. Sweetest woman you'd ever want to meet. Oh my gosh. When we first met, um, when we first met her, Kerrigan was about seven and she was convinced that it was Mrs. Claus. She said, is that Mrs. Claus, mommy? I said, oh, I don't know. And she had, Janet had this British accent and this snow white hair. She was so sweet. Now this... Needle is so tiny and I'm having a hard time even getting the threader in here. The eye of the needle was not working so I got one from another kit that I just used. I've never had that before. Here it is here and there's the, the, the hole doesn't go through for the eye. It's really strange. Um, never had that. So you just take the one strand of your floss and join the ends up together. fluff of thread there. Okay, so take your ends and you're just going to knot them together like this. And then there's your two strands. So it was just one strand that we've basically folded in half. So there, now you have your two strands of thread. 
Okay, so we just have to look at our pattern and figure out where this first bead is going to go. So it is right here next to his eyeball. So I'm just going to stand up for a minute and make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to pull the thread through. We're not going to pull it all the way, so just let some hang there for a minute. We're going to pick up one of the beads. So you just put your needle, and that, that's why I like this little dish, because you can slide it up the side of your dish. And I just hold it, it's right here on the needle. And then you're going to put your needle down through the hole. So we just went on a diagonal. And I'm going to flip this over before I pull it too tight, and I'm just going to run the needle through the loop at the end. And now I'm going to pull, and it's going to lock it into place. So there is our first bead. So we just came up this hole here, we went diagonally through the bead, and then we just went down the other diagonal hole. So now we're going to do the next stitch. We're going to come up over here next to it, next to it right here. So I've just come up right over here. We're going to pick up another bead. So you just scoop it up. I just hold it on my needle. I go down the diagonal hole and I pull the thread through. Now this needle I hurt myself on all the time. It's tiny and it's sharp. So you can see the beads are on an angle when they go through. Okay. All right. And we're going to pick up a third one. So we're going to go in the next hole that we're due to come up. And then you're going to scoop up a bead and you're going to go down the hole. And just line them up. Sometimes you have to fiddle with them a little bit. So there you go. So there are your three beads. And I'm just going to tie this off for now. There's a lot more that I need to do in this section, but I'm just going to tie it off for now and show you the next bead. So the next one we do is the purple. Now these are the little seed beads. So let's see where these are. So we did the pebble gray. So let me just mark those off before I forget. So they were these three right here. So those are done. So the pebble gray had the plus next to it. So the other one is the petite purple and that's the solid black circle. So now let's look on the pattern for the solid black circle and there's some going down this way. So let me get the thread color that I need. So I need the medium purple thread. I'm just going to take my gray off here for a minute. This is the tricky part is getting this thread through the needle because it's it is so so tiny. So again we just need the two strands so we're just going to find the ends knot them together. It's just the ends of a single strand. So now we have two. So this time we're going to start over here next to this purple stitch. Okay, so we're going to gum up the hole right here. We're going to turn it over and hold that tail so that you can still see the loop there. You're going to pick up your bead, so slide it up the side of your dish if you have one like that. We're going to go diagonal. So we came up this hole right here, and we're going to go diagonal right here, just like a regular cross stitch. We're going to go down. As soon as you get down, don't pull too hard. Go around the back and put your needle through that loop and lock it into place. And please don't judge the back of my cross stitch. <laughs> yes, it is messy. I apologize. So then you come up in the bottom right, just like we were doing regular cross stitch. You come up, you're going to go through the bead again. Now I go through from the bottom, go through the bead like that. And then you're going to go down through the top left hole. And what that does, it stands the bead upright. So let me show you on here. So you're coming up just like a regular cross stitch. So when you're doing the large beads like we did with the silver ones, the gray ones, you're coming up this hole, you're going through the bead, and you're going down this hole, and then you're done. So that's the half cross stitch, okay? When you're doing these ones, you're coming up this hole, you're going through the bead, 
like this and down this hole then you're coming up here you're winding your thread through the bead and you're coming down this hole and what that does is it makes the bead tip and stand upright and then your cross stitch is basically your threads are basically doing this they're going up and through here and over and then up and through here and over okay does that make sense yeah good okay so then we go down we do the next so we're just following our pattern so we have this first one here so we did this one now we're going to go on a diagonal and do this next one so we pull up through we get a bead Sorry, you can't see the bead dish. You get the bead, go down the diagonal, come up on the bottom, and you go through. And make sure you don't catch any threads when you're putting the needle through. And then you go back down. Now we have two beads. All right, so I'm going to keep doing this, and I'm going to wait till I get all this done and all of him done, and then I'll show you how to cut these out and how to mount this part onto his hand so it might take me a couple days but i will be back all right thanks guys i'm back with my cross stitch i have it all done now so there's the little um container that he's going to hold and i have all the beading done it's absolutely beautiful when you get all those beads on there there's two little sections that i have left to do there's the little beads up here on the top of his hat and it shows the little heart um, and it says it's a petite Victorian gold beads with the yellow but it's a five beaded or a five bead knot and I've never done that before so I'm just going to look at the instructions here and it says five bead knot over one so it looks like you take two beads and go through the two of them and then when you're coming back from the bottom right to the top left you put three beads on so I thought I would wait and show you guys how I'm going to do that because this is <laughs> new to me. So, and I just keep having to stand up and check. I'm using a new tripod that Santa Claus brought me. It's the Manfrotto, which is awesome. And I'm loving this, but I'm just still trying to get used to it. So, okay, so we're going to put two beads on our needle and we're going to go... We came up the bottom left and we're going to go into the top right and as we go down we're going to remember to go through that little loop in the back and lock that into place. So we now have the two beads going across there. We're going to come up in the bottom right corner and now we're just going to string three beads on here. We're just going to scoop those up. So I've been working on this pattern steady now for, I'd say, about a week and just trying to get this done. There we go. So there's a little knot of beads. So I'm just going to take my thread around the back and anchor this really good just because um, the thread hadn't been used anywhere else in this part of the pattern. So I don't want it to be loose and have the beads come off. As you can see, the back of my cross stitch is messy, but the, <laughs> the thing is, um, that's just how my cross stitch looks. <laughs> and a lot of people, they have cross stitch that looks beautiful in the back, but this is gonna be covered up with paper, which is what I'm gonna show you guys in a couple minutes. And all this will be covered up and no one will know, except, well, me and now all of you, but that's okay. That doesn't bother me. Okay. So I'm just going to clip that off and then we have our little jewel um, stone that has to be attached now and that's going to go at the end of his um, hood thing here. So let me just find my box. So you get your little jewel in here like that and it looks like a little little diamond kind of shaped bead and it just shows here how you attach that so it's going to go in with Victorian gold beads so you're going to go in through let's see you're going to go in 
it shows arrows coming this way. So we're going to string a bead, go through the big one, go down through three beads, and then back up. So what I'm going to do is lock that first little bead in place. So I'm going to come up in this bottom corner, and I'm going to put a bead. And I'm just going to attach this the way we've done the other beads. And I'm going to lock that. I'm going to come back up in the bottom right and go back up through and get him fully locked in place like that. Then what I'm going to do is come up in the top right again and I go down through the bead. I'm going to put this new big bead on here like that, so he's kind of hanging there now. I'm going to gather three more beads. Okay, so I have those three beads. I'm going to go back up through this one, and those will stay in place because they obviously can't come back up through that bead. So I'm just going to pull. Sorry, this is very fiddly, and I know you can't see what my hands are doing, but I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I'm pulling those back through. I'm trying to get the one that's in the center pulled down a little bit so that the other one will pull up. There we go. And then I'm just going to pull so that there's not so much string between the beads there. And then I'm going to go back up through that first little bead that we anchored down. Got a lot of thread going through that little bead right now, so I'm just going to see. Yep, yeah, it went through like that. I'm going to go back down the upper left hole, and there we go. So now we have the bead, the big hanging diamond shaped bead. We've got the three little beads right there, and then we went back up through the big one and through this other one, and I've anchored it. And now I'm just going to anchor this thread trim it and we are done like that so there we go so he has this little thing so you have to be careful when you're trimming at this part now when we're trimming all around that you don't trim too close to there okay so now to trim we have to trim this part off and trim him out. So we're, what I'm going to do is just go in and just cut through here and separate that one. So when you're trimming your project, you can't go right up to these little holes because the threads go through those holes and you will completely separate it and undo your work. So you have to go down on this bottom row. Let me just do this so I can concentrate on what I'm doing and then show you. So you have to go down to this row here and leave that little bit of a paper edge. And you're going to go around your entire project and trim it like that. Especially on the corners you have to be careful because you cannot go right up to that paper edge. See what I mean? Because that's where, the, that's where your threads are right along here. So you have to leave a little bit of a paper edge going all the way around. And like here, when we go in this corner, you have to do it on a bit of an angle because what's going to happen is if you go too close, those stitches are going to fall out and your beads are going to fall off. And then you just have to do it all over again. Especially something like this little piece here where it juts out in certain places more than others. So you just have to be very careful with this trimming process. And I usually wait until I'm in the mood and I'm not tired. So I usually don't do it right after I've stitched. Sometimes you get a section like this where it's kind of going in and out. You just have to be very careful what you're doing and leave that little edge of paper. It's better to have too much 
paper than not enough. And on this initial pass, as you're going around and trimming everything, you can you can do this and go around like this and get some rid of some of this extra paper, just so it's not so heavy in your hand when you're trying to trim this. And really, when all this whole thing is done, no one really notices these little paper edges anyway. They're just admiring the beauty of this project that you made. And these are probably the worst scissors I can be using. They're so tiny, but they're precise and a little bit easier than using something that big. So they do hurt your hands. So I don't know what project I'm going to make my next cross stitch. Um, this will be the only one I do as a tutorial. Um, this is a pretty big one. Um, but I, I do them all the same. Obviously the ones that I've done and put in frames, you're, you're not cutting them out like this. So I've done the, there we go, so that part's done. So I've done these two that I've put in these little frames. These are um, six by six frames that I buy at Michael's and I wait till I get a 50% off coupon, but they're the studio decor. They're a nice thick frame and then they fit perfectly in there. There's nothing you have to do and they, they sit back in. So it's really cute. So this is a little winter one with the Scotty dog. And then I have this one here, which I absolutely love with the butterfly and it has the three dimensional, um, beads and everything on it and a little button down there but again it's the same frame they sell these in black or white so there's your little thing so I'm gonna um, step away from the camera for a minute trim this one very carefully and I'll come back and show you how to attach this one so I'm just about to trim this one but I just trimmed off all the excess and so now I can go in with my smaller scissors and trim it like you know precisely going around what I will sometimes use for this process is my Ot light. Um, this is just a nice little light. It does have a clamp that you can get as well. It comes with it. Um, I don't use that. I just have it in the stand and it screws into the base. Um, it does have a little light, but my, my bulb burn out. But you can see that when you use it, you can get nice and close and a little more accurate when you're, when you're cutting. And this is good for when you're threading your needles as well. So it just helps project get a little bit closer to you. Okay, so I have everything cut out. I got dangerously close to the edge of his hand right here. I did start to cut it, but I stopped myself. And what's going to happen is this is going to be attached together anyway. Um, when I looked at the instructions just now to figure out how to put the pieces together, it does say how to attach the treasure and it does have the instructions there. Um, I'm still happy with the way I did it. I'm not sure. I think it's pretty close to how they said to do it. Um, so attaching the pieces, so attaching this piece here to his hand, um, it just says secure one strand of medium brown floss, and I'm actually going to use the beading needle for this, just because there's a lot of thread going on between these, and I think this one will just be smaller to go up through there. Um, it says um, secure one strand of medium floss on the back of the gift, position the gift behind his hand, come through both pieces to the front of the hand, do half cross stitches in the direction of the last leg on a few of the cross stitches to secure the pieces together and refer to the photograph. So it just basically says to kind of see roughly where um, his hands are going to hold it. It ends up kind of butting against the edge of his um, beard there. So I think this looks good. So I'm just going to come up like this and it says to just do half cross stitches but I'm just going to kind of go just on angles here <laughs> you can hear cars going up our street we had snow Christmas Eve and Christmas Day it's beautiful outside but we don't have plows here and the cars are trying to get up the now icy streets all right, so I'm just going to do some little stitches. I'm coming up through these little holes 
I'm just going up and down and it's going straight through the gift and the thing is I'm backing these with paper so it's all going to be glued together anyway um, I've seen people on YouTube back these with felt um, you can do that I just prefer the paper because I like to put the uh, the name of the project and the date that I finished it um, I like to write that on the back the, the felt is very nice but I've just always done them with the paper and I've done I think I have about eight or nine of these and then I've done three other ones I did a turtle which is really cute um, I've done a Santa Claus and I've done a little sleigh but I've all I've given those all to people so those I just labeled and said you know Merry Christmas or here you go or happy birthday or whatever the occasion was um, I wrote the date on it and said it was from me but the other ones that I did my Christmas ones um, are on my tree right now so I'll take you over to my tree in a second here and show you how I've marked them so there is your little gift on his hand and I'm gonna come back and show you how I back these with paper but there it is so let me just show you how I back these and just take my phone with me so these are my little craft trees and I have like handmade ornaments ornaments that my mom had made stuff like that and here is the very first one of these beaded kits that I had ever made and I did this two years ago so I label it what it's called that was the first one I've done and I completed it on October uh, 14th I have a little angel that I did I have this one with my youngest daughter's initial so that was number six and I have the skates which are really sweet this is another one that you do and you the two pieces are separate and then you join them together the way they do this one though is that skate underneath only goes to this point it's not a full skate underneath there and then they have the little um, strings hanging there on my other tree I have this one for my oldest daughter Bryn that was my fifth one this is another one um, that has an overlapping piece this is an overlapping piece on the top of the sweater that was my fourth one I did this one which may have been my last one yeah number eight I think that was the last one I had done that year I just kept ordering them they're so cute and then I did this little bird so that one just called winter bird that was the second one I had done so that's how I label them and I'm just going to double check my phone and my photos and make sure that this was in fact the last one I had done so that was number eight so I'll label this new one I'll label that number nine okay so I have everything trimmed the hand or the gift is attached to his hand so now I'm going to back it on some paper this is the paper I use <laughs> sorry it's upside down because my tripod's in the way um, it's just paper that you get at Michael's so I have some scrap pieces here so I'm just going to back these with um, brown so all you do is you take a pencil and you just trace around it and it's going to trace around the gift as well make sure you get every little piece of it so that's it so now you're just going to take your scissors and cut this out I don't use um, dark card cardstock um, I will usually use a color that matches the items I did you'll see the ones that I did on my tree um, some of them had a light blue behind it like the little sweater and stuff I did so I try to do some kind of color that'll complement the main design these ones I'm just going to stick with the brown because they're on the brown paper and it'll just make a cohesive look for all of um, the ones that are in the nativity set um, because I believe the 
paper for those is all the same. These Mill Hill kits, I wouldn't recommend a large one like this for you to start off with. Um, the little ones that I've done, like the pine cone um, that I showed you, the little winter bird, um, ones like that I think are a great uh, size to start out with. Um, they're just a little bit smaller, not as much work, because um, this one was a lot of work. And it's probably taking me all together if I was to work on it every day, it would still probably take me, if I worked on it every day, it would probably still take me about a week. Um, I ended up working on this one and working on a little sleigh that I had done for someone at, uh, at work as part of their Christmas gift. Um, but it, so it probably took me all together over a month or so to get this one actually done. And um, I've been working on it since last week. I just keep it by the TV and I've been working on it a little bit every night. So you just line it up, make sure everything kind of lines up good and it's not going to be completely perfect. So don't worry about it. It's mostly just to have some kind of backing on it. And after you get it on and glued, you can always um, you can always trim some of the paper afterwards. So I'm just going to leave it like this for a minute. And I need a piece of string to um, hang it from. So I think I'm going to go with the purple with this guy. Yeah, I just use three strands because if I've been working on the project, you're usually using two or three strands of thread. So I'm just going to split this like that. So it's just three. I make the string probably when it's folded in half, probably about five inches long or so. And I just take the ends of it and I knot it. So I started to say that I was going to use like Baker's twine or something uh, to start tying these. And I realized that somewhere down the road, I might run out of Baker's twine or not be able to get the same kind. So I thought if I go with the string that comes with the kit, I'll always have the right color because it goes with the kit. So this is going to be laid down in here and glued in once I glue that down. And then that's going to be your little string. And I'm going to center it most likely with the little part on the top of his hat, but I'll show you how I figure that one out. So I'm just going to take, I just have a thin marker here, so I'm just going to write the name of it on here. And this one is, how did I do them on the other one? I did the name of it first. So this is Alisar. This was number nine that I've made for my tree. So I completed it today. And today is December 26th, 2017. So I always write everything on the back first before I glue it down so that if I screw up what I'm writing, um, it'll be okay. So that's what it's going to look like. So now I'm going to put glue on the back of my design. And like I said, with some of the little strings that are sticking out, you can just kind of push back with the glue. And this glue here, I use the Eileen's um, Tacky Glue. So it dries clear, which is good. I mean, you don't want to ooze, have it oozing up through the holes or anything, so don't get too crazy with it. I'm sure there's some avid cross stitchers that are probably having eight fits of how I'm doing this right now, but I've done it with the other ones, and as you can see, they're on my tree and they've lasted. And they look nice.
And these Mill Hill kits, you can get them for any season. You can get little Easter eggs. You can get Halloween items like I showed you. You can get the larger ones that you can frame. Um, and again, I use one, two, three stitch. And you can do the, um, I'm gonna put a little bit extra glue here where my string is gonna go. Um, you can get the framed ones. And I've used one, two, three stitch and I've used Austiner's, uh, which is a place in Texas and they were very good. Actually, I think one of my wise men, I think it's the Malachor, I think is how you say his name. I got him from Austiner's because one, two, three stitch was sold out, but one, two, three stitch also emailed me when they did get it back in, but I had already ordered it. So, um, I didn't need it any, anymore. Now this glue dries quickly. So just test and make sure if you're putting your little string to hang it, that it is centered and he is hanging straight because that would be annoying if after all this work, he ends up hanging crooked. And once all this is dry, you can go around and snip some of the extra paper that's hanging around the edges. But this one seems pretty good. And there's the back. You can see his little jewel that we did at the end there that's hanging down past the, the thing. And I did trim in around here. Again, I could use some little tiny scissors and go in around there and, and trim that. But overall, I'm very happy with it. It's a beautiful kit. I have all my pieces back in the kit. And I'll leave that with the instructions in case I ever wanted to create another one for somebody and I can just buy the um, perforated paper and like I said the number um, the numbers for the floss are all labeled here so if you ever needed to um, buy some more floss you can do that as well so there we go so I'm gonna go um, hang him on my tree I'm gonna let him dry for a few minutes and then I'm gonna put him back on my tree or put him out on my tree and usually what I do is I'll get a heavy book or something just to push down on it for a little while just till it completely sets and make sure the glue dries. So there you go, that is a Mill Hill kit. I hope you enjoyed watching how these are made and I hope you try them yourself. So thank you so much for watching and happy holidays. See you guys.